Greetings, fellow moviegoers, and welcome to Movie Central, the place to talk about movies, TV shows based on movies, toys based on movies, games based on movies, and rides based on movies. I'm your host, Mr. CTS, and this is my pet gorilla, George. Let's get into this review. I have no real segue. The year is 2020, and Pixar had just released two big box office films in 2018 and 2019, respectively, with Incredibles 2 and Toy Story 4. But... Those were sequels to movies that had existed previously. So in 2020, I guess they were wanting to try something original because clearly their original movies were so popular with people. Anyways, this movie featured the voices of both Peters from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Spider-Man and Star-Lord, as well as other talent like Octavia Spencer, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and Mel Rodriguez. But is the movie at all good? Let's talk about it today. This is Onward. Two brothers, Ian and Barley, voiced by Tom Holland and Chris, I love Donald Trump Pratt, start missing their dad. With the help of a very powerful rock and a stick, they bring him back to life, but not entirely. They bring back just his legs. Yeah. So they need to find a new rock to bring the rest of him back before he's gone forever, because apparently it's a rare stone, despite the fact that it's a magical world. Plot holes aside, they go on a crazy journey where they meet a manticore, biker gang pixies, and a dragon made out of a high school. I cannot believe those words just came out of my mouth. So, I really hate the story in this film. Firstly, it's a non-original world that Pixar is known for. Forget toys coming to life, forget humanoid cars, forget monsters living in a society, and said they chose a realm that DreamWorks would have been better off with. The Elves World. This should have been DreamWorks' movie to make, but we got Pixar doing a subpar job. The intended message here, which is overly shat- which is overshadowed substantially, is that siblings should always be there for each other. And God, I don't want that story again. We already have somewhat similar stories like that with Monsters U, Frozen, Fox and the Hound, so why go with this story again? The failure of the social commentary also stucks out like a sore thumb. That commentary is a critique of technology and consumerism, which I find super hypocritical considering Ralph breaks the internet two years earlier, did the entire thing with technology, and mindlessly plugged all their properties. So what makes them so over-the-top... Whatever, I don't even know anymore. But aside from that, is there anything good about this movie? Well, let's find out, starting with the characters. <sighs> this isn't going to be easy. Ian is awful. I'm sorry. I know that Tom Holland is really trying, but this is the second animated kids character he played where I didn't see a good performance. The first was Spies in Disguise, featuring Will Smith, also bad. He's not realistic compared to an actual teenager. Pixar normally does a good job with realistic depictions of children, Riley and Inside Out, Merida and Brave, Miguel and Coco. But for this one, they dropped the ball. He spends the first 10 minutes trying to learn how to make a friend. No matter how socially awkward you are, and he's not even that awkward, most people have at least one friend by the time they're 16. I should know. I'm freaking socially awkward! Barley is an insult to gamers with the D&D thing, but that's only the beginning of the problems. First off, he's in love with his car. That's a Queen song. Ew. Second off, he totally seems like a surfer dude. The only thing he has going for him is the fact that he misses his father, and it does get very... almost there. The only positive thing I can say about the characters is is that the actors are doing their darndest and trying really hard. It's just the script just fails. The mom is also stupid. She adds nothing to the story and is just shoehorned in in there for one extra character. Pixies were created for the toys. That's about it. The Manticore adds little to nothing to the story. 
She's just there for some slapstick and for the stereotypical, I saw them, they went that way moment. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You've seen a bunch of movies. You definitely know what I'm talking about. She may serve the purpose of hammering home the message about consumerism as her tavern has basically become Chuck E. Cheese, but again, remember what I said earlier, Ralph breaks the internet. This is the same as Gonzo in the 2011 Muppets movie, except with that movie, it was one scene and was used as a cover-up. Here, it played out too far. The centaur stepdad, whose name's escaping me, is in the movie for like five minutes. The only purpose he serves is to drive home the fact that the boys miss their dad, and for an incredibly unfunny scene where they disguise as him. Ugh, <sighs> man, this movie has terrible comedy. Wilden Lightfoot, a pair of legs, is literally, no pun intended, the butt of every joke. Come on, Pixar. First Brave, now this. What's next? Luca's gonna have some bad humor? Oh, wait! Don't worry. We'll get there in a minute. So, yeah, the characters suck and are nowhere near as good as other Pixar characters, like in Toy Story, Incredibles, Monsters, Inc., and even Cars, for that matter. Hell, the characters in Brave and the Good Dinosaur are better than this lot. Like, what the heck? So, how's the animation? While the characters look really terrible, especially the elves who look like blue boogers and the manticore who looks like a stuffed animal, the background animation is amazing as expected. The background looks real. Every Pixar movie up to this point has made background animation that looks nearly real. And this movie continues that tradition. That said, however, the animation would have been better if the characters looked a lot better. It's really, really sad to note that Pixar's most recent movies that I've seen, Soul and now the beginning of Luca, all have this problem. The characters don't blend in with the backgrounds. But don't worry, we'll talk about that soon enough. The music is generic. It doesn't add anything to the story. And if you took it out of the movie, it wouldn't have made a single difference. Even the worst Pixar movies up to this point have had really, really good music, for the most part. A music can either make or break a film, and in Onward's case, it kind of breaks it. I just hope to God that the next score for the next Pixar movies that I watch after Luca are good. <sighs> I know I may get some hate for this, but this is my show, and you're going to hear my opinion, so this is my final verdict. Not only is this movie terrible, but it is by far, in my opinion, Pixar's worst film Yet, it beats out Cars 3 by a landslide, as I not only gave it a lower score, but I nearly gave it no points at all. If it wasn't held up by the fact that the background animation was pretty, or the performances from the two leads weren't that bad, I would have paid no attention to this movie and just threw it in the trash as the non-redeemable movie that can go in the bin of movies such as Artemis Fowl, the Tom Sawyer movie from the 30s, and Johnny Tremaine, which are the worst movies I have ever seen in my life. For that, I give this movie a 1 out of 10. It's the worst Pixar film of all time, and I only recommend it to the morbidly curious. <sighs> yeah, I know, I got angry in this video. It's one of the few times I've gotten angry in the past year. I mean, the last time I actually did this was with Last Jedi. Go check that out if you have the chance. Hashtag shameless plug. But that's it for this review. Feel free to leave your thoughts on the movie below and tune in next week when I take a look at two movies released in the same era with the pandemic era Pixar films. With that said, my name is Mr. CCS. This is Movie Central. And that, my friends, is a wrap. See you next week.